How's it going, Grey Boys? It is week 11 of this interesting season so far. We're sitting at 7-3 and three in the country, number 17 in the country, and we just kind of dominated Indiana, 35-3. to three. The Hoosiers weren't really any sort of problem for us, but unfortunately, after beating them, we didn't move up anywhere in the rankings. Now, in this episode, we will be playing against Michigan State, who also has been struggling this season and then we have maryland as our final game uh the week after that but a lot of buys will be mixed in so just a lot of recruiting to do as we get near the end of this season and right off the board uh we're gonna remove william wilson the athlete from the board he commits to michigan thought we had a good chance to pick him up but uh, i guess they just had a really good visit and he not just locked us out but also decided to commit elsewhere now, as far as the rest of these guys go, it's kind of interesting. We're in a lead with a lot of the guys, or we're in a good spot where we could take the lead, but uh, it just goes down to lock percentage. A lot of these guys are kind of low lock cheese, so deciding who we give the points to is going to make things definitely interesting. And I'm kind of just hoping that with visits, we can reel them in, or at least get them easily in the offseason. So a guy like RJ Rivera, we are up uh, 3,200 points. And we gained 730 last week. So I'm going to drop him down to 350 points a week. And then hopefully we can get a good visit scheduled relatively quickly. And that'll be nice. And then anybody below 50% locked, we're going to max them out. A uh, little bit interesting. I don't know if it's the right play or not. But that's kind of how we're going to roll for now. Now, actually, speaking of RJ Rivera, he is ready for his visit. So at 58% locked with a huge lead, we should be the only team in contention. And we'll have him come visit this next week uh, against Michigan State, our final home game. So hopefully a lot of guys are ready to visit next week. Otherwise, we'll have to set those up during bye weeks. And that's never good. But we can advance uh, to week 12. where we'll, Again, we'll play the Spartans. And then, I don't know, hopefully there's some chaos this week. And some teams above us lose, and we can jump up in the rankings without having to play a game. And then hopefully we can beat Michigan State and move up again. Twice in one episode would be pretty good. Okay, John Williams is going to be composing the defensive line for us in the future. Uh, if you don't get that joke, John Williams is the guy who made, like, the music for, what, Star Wars, Indiana Jones? Uh, you know his music. <laughs> Anyways, uh, so we get a good commit there. Locked out by the left guard, Taylor Outlaw. A lot of guys ready to visit, though. So we'll try and just continue to schedule those guys. At this point, we only have five guys committed. Uh, a lot of guys scheduled. Dion Rhodes, Jamal Neal, Mike Hurd, Taylor Outlaw, Ben Patrick, Darren Jones, RJ Rivera, and Jesse Jones all scheduled to visit right now. And we have two more that we will almost certainly be bringing to this game. John Jordan, we haven't offered a scholarship to, but we might as well do that. As well as scheduling him getting some complimentary visits. And the cornerback JT Brewster, similar situation. Schedule him and get some complimentary visits. So RJ did go up to 65% locked. So after this week, he should be nearing a good point for us. Edwin Clay, 43. He's going to keep getting all the points. And that's just kind of going to how it's have to be for a lot of these guys. Um, let's offer scholarships to anybody that doesn't have them because apparently there's a lot of guys that I haven't offered a scholarship to. And I think that could hurt us quite a bit. So uh, try and use the rest of our points to convince people that it's worth hanging out with us. And oh, did we just get an insta commit with Graham Lindsay? <laughs> okay, well, that was worth it, huh? I forgot that I allowed myself just to even have one level of the insta-commit skill. Uh, as unfortunately, Taylor Outlaws locked us out and we can't uh, bring him back. But with this visit scheduled, we're going to keep him there. I don't know if it'll mess with complimentary visits if we get rid of it. But man, I was not expecting to just uh, get an insta-commit there. So that is fantastic. Uh, and we're just going to keep offering those, even though some of these guys were not in the lead with. It's better, I think, to offer them now. Uh, show them a little bit of commitment from the school, and then also that way we can get those points to use uh, next week towards somebody who maybe needs them a little bit more. So that gets us to now six players uh, offered scholarships and committed, which is great news. And oh, this is also good news for us. Number one and number two, Georgia and Auburn are playing this week, both undefeated. One of them going to fall, which is always good news for us. Michigan 
just survived against Penn State. They play Indiana, so probably a cakewalk. LSU survived in overtime on the road at Bama. Anything else? Did we have some losses? We moved up two spots to number 15 because Nebraska lost. Uh, Big Red not going that week. Georgia Tech lost. Cincinnati lost. And that is just absolutely beautiful. Well, let's uh, get into this game, huh? We are not the better overall team, unlike last week, but we are favored to win. We might not be higher overall, but we are definitely playing better. 10 visiting prospects now as Michigan State is a B minus team and they are two and seven on the season. That is atrocious. Uh, this is a battle for the green Michigan team. They beat an FCS team and they beat uh, Illinois in overtime. Other than that, it has not been good. Although they're not playing easy teams. Lost of a close one to Miami, a close one to Oregon, a relatively close one to Northwestern, Wisconsin, uh, Indiana. Not the best loss against Michigan, but only two scores. And again, a couple of scores against Ohio State. A lot of ranked teams uh, on this schedule for Michigan State, but they just haven't been able to find wins. It's an 83 overall with an 83 offense and an 82 defense for the Spartans. Well, they are the away team, but I really want them to wear uh, that gruff Sparty helmet. There it is. It's a cool helmet. Kind of a little bit different from the, the standard home, but, you know, enough the same. I don't know if any of that makes sense. Let's go with the alternate fort. Throw the white pants on. Uh, we're really mixing it up. I'm probably going to get confused as to who I'm throwing to in this game. As we come into this one, they have a bad offense. They're not doing a whole lot uh, either way. And defensively, they're okay at stopping the run, but they're giving up a ton of points and a ton of passing yards. So maybe a chance for Maurice Tate to thrive as again, uh, you know what? If we have the chance, we will absolutely try to get every single recruiting goal possible, especially that passing for 250 and running for 100. Top players not on hot streaks for us. And the second best player for Michigan State is injured. They actually have a really good quarterback at 91 overall, 21 total touchdowns. Uh, 131, 236, 50, I mean, it's not a great season. Uh, torn bicep and a dislocated elbow for the two injured players of Michigan State is good news for us because uh, we want their defense to be as weak as possible so that our offense can thrive. Uh, as always with this game, I, I mean, I feel like a broken record saying it, but once more East State gets going, I think it's just time for the offense to pick up some steam and start to roll. All right, in the Ipsy. Ryan Earson to a beautiful late fall day. Uh, nobody had to travel too far for this game. As the team from East Lansing calls heads, it is heads, and we are going to start with the football. No wind. Absolutely phenomenal weather for playing football. All right, well, let's put Frank Blair back once again. I want to score a kick return touchdown at some point in the season. It has not happened yet. Who knows if it will? Oh, I should have been able to. He fumbled the ball. I was going to say I should have been able to cut it back inside, but laying on top of the defender, the refs don't call it dead. And they're going to give Michigan State the football. I mean, we can't challenge it, but we got to take a look at this one, right? That seemed like uh, we had such a great opportunity. And was he down before the ball came out? I don't know. I think that's a terrible call from the refs. That elbow looks clearly down for me, but again, we can't challenge it now that we've looked at the replay. Or maybe we can. It's not saying that I can't. Oh, well, this could be an interesting spot. Could be wasting a timeout and a challenge immediately in this game, but I think that Frank Blair was down, and if we can get the ball back, that would be huge. We do not want to give Michigan State that much momentum. Seriously looks like his elbow goes down. And there it is, a successful challenge in NCAA 14. That is not something that you see often. The refs tried to maybe give a little handout to the Spartans. We were able to fight them off, thankfully, and I did not want to risk pitching the ball. We just got the ball back from the review. Let's not give it away. Just a yard on the ground for the quarterback, Maurice Tate, on that one as we will look to throw it to Jody Gentry, trying to throw the mid-screen. The spin move doesn't work, and it's a horse collar as he's just going to pick up a yard, and it's third and nine. Well, now we're in this tough spot where we have a quarterback that is not warmed up and nine yards to gain. 
Uh, it's probably a little bit closer to eight than you would expect, but this is not going to be easy. Looking for Durham Finch just because it's over the middle of the field. He's wide open, a good, accurate throw, and he holds on to the ball. We know he's had some problems catching in the past few weeks, but that time it's good for 14 yards. So the first first down of the game as Maurice Tate starts it two of two through the air. Nearing midfield would try the read option. Maurice going to be able to keep it, trying to use the blockers. And I tried to slide down there, but he took a little bit of a hit. Regardless, that one puts us across midfield with another first down. And we can just hand this one off up the middle. Linebacker looked to be there. Durham Finch absolutely trucked the man, but there was just too many white jerseys in the area. Well, it's going to be a second and six now after that one. Uh, what can we do? Maurice Tate looking to throw. Why could be open? That was not who we... I didn't throw it to Zach Wilson. Threw it to whoever was coming across on the slant. I guess Maurice isn't quite as warmed up as I had thought, though, because it was just completely dropped. We're going to go with the slip screen. Got to make sure that it's a pass that can be completed. A lot of blockers for Stan Williams. He gets a pancake out there. He doesn't quite get the corner. 93 zooming to make that tackle, but it is another first down. That is always good news as we just got to keep running. Stan Williams going to get another carry here. Getting some blocking, but can't get the edge, and he'll lose a yard. And I really want to take a shot at the end zone here, but I just don't think we can. Mitchell should be wide open. We'll see how they cover it. Not very well. I'm going to take that as an easy check down and an easy completion in this game. And on another third and decently long, we're going to have to go to the air. Two of two on this drive. Can we make it three of three? A little rollout. They're covering it well. Right bumper wide open, but he can't get it to Courtney Smith. So it's fourth down. And this is going to be a controversial call for sure. Could take an easy field goal, but we're going to go for it. Maurice, maybe not the guy to throw. They're chasing him outside the pocket. No way he makes the throw. It's caught by Jody Gentry. It's a turnover on downs, but I'm just surprised. On the run, back across his field in the body, and somehow he's able to complete that one accurately. I do not get this man. Well, not the best situation. Could have three points. Instead, we're bringing the pressure first down. The defense out on the field. They're going to go with the read option or the counter, maybe. The Michael Bozeman, he's going to lose two as Dallas Miller blew that play up. We brought the pressure, and it absolutely paid off. And now we can just kind of hopefully sit back a little bit and rest on that one. They're going to run it again. And Sims gets the tackle, but it's a good pickup by Bozeman. That'll make it third and two. And so far in this one, it definitely seems like they want to try to run the ball. This one could be going to the edge. No, it's a play action, a wide open man. Ron Johnson III just got absolutely pancaked. And it's up to Frank Blair, the fastest on the team, to track down Vince Rutledge as he goes 63 yards on that big conversion. Play action, absolutely the right call there as they had to have known we were bringing some pressure. This time we bring pressure again and it's dropped for a loss, but there's a flag. Is this going to be an offside? I don't, we must not have gotten back in time. I didn't even notice it. Sims was still inside the offensive line when that one was snapped. He didn't make it uh, over in time and that's why we get called. Man, Michigan State just doing anything they can to cause some blunders trying to get that third win of the season and they might score first brian kelly left notre dame to come be a running back i guess regardless it's second and one inside the five now kind of expecting a run up the middle it's handed off sims not able to do it nobody can get the tackle and brian kelly on his second carry goes into the end zone it looked like we had him stopped but he just kept driving the legs the Spartans will take a 7-0 lead here. Well, one thing's certain, this would be a pretty stunning loss. Like, sure, we're not the high arrow for all team, but we have beaten much better teams than Michigan State this year. Frank Blair tried to return that one, and we're going to be starting with terrible field position this time. This is a team that is struggling at the moment. Should have scored points. It could be down just four, but I don't know. Maybe it got a little bit too greedy. One thing, however, is certain to me, this Michigan State defense has come to play. They do not want us to get anything on the ground, but this is where we're going to try to burn them. The little triple option. Fontenot, the pitch man on this one, probably should have done that. And yeah, we're going to lose three yards. It was risky even to pitch that one, but I had a, some sort of hope that he could do something. 
Instead, once again, third and a mile for this offense. They have not converted many of these. I'm not confident they'll be able to convert this one either. I, a over the middle, Zach Wilson. Good job holding on to that one. Good separation on the slant route. We needed that. Let's go in the hurry up for a second. Michigan State was doing the exact same thing. Let's try to give them a taste of their own medicine. Stepping back to throw. This is a risky one. Fontenot, though, comes down with it. All right. Tate's heating up. Both possessions, we have made it to midfield or further. So that's good news for the offense. But you need to see more than that. Good running up the middle for Durham Finch Jr. Plenty of space. That's another first down. And we got Curtis on this wheel route in the hurry up. I'm trying to score before this first quarter comes to a close. That's a terribly risky throw. And it's picked off. That is entirely on me. I got too greedy. And I waited, uh, or I didn't wait long enough to throw that one up. Also, that was just... It wasn't a great throw either. So for the offense now, that's two drives and two turnovers on downs. That's not good. Well, this one is pretty good. Never mind. A run up the middle. We hit him in the backfield. And he's still going to get a yard out of it as the clock will wind down here. They're going to maybe try to get another playoff, but almost certainly, yeah, we're going into the second quarter. Down 7 nothing. The defense can hold here. We'll be fine, but if we give up more points, it's going to be hard to stop the bleeding there. Uh, just got to hope for the best, I guess. They're going to run it on this first play of the second quarter, and that might be a touchdown. Ron Johnson trying to chase the running back down. The diving tackle prevents it, but that is a couple of really big plays for Michigan State. We cannot be giving those up. We weren't very successful in stopping these guys. The last time they were in this spot, I don't feel too confident about this one either. Dallas Miller, again, in the backfield to blow up the play, but it's a broken tackle from the running back. And Michigan State scores again. This one is not going the way we were hoping. This is a big day for recruiting, as well as just our season, and it has gone off to a horrible start. At least we're to the 25 on that return. The offense does have 100 yards, but no points to show for it. And a turnover on downs as well as just an actual turnover. I'm certainly not happy with it. Let's see if we can do something about that through the air. Can't throw any picks, obviously. But we can maybe just throw into Brian Curtis. He stays in bounds. A little step back cheese. Maybe got him an extra yard there. All things considered, Maurice, 8 of 11 is not too bad, and we're going to give him another chance here. Maybe just have to get outside the pocket, scrambling. X could have been open. A could have technically been open there, and those are makeable throws, but just an awkward throw when you roll out to the left. So we decide to just keep it, take the yards on the ground, and we can once again say that we've made it across midfield on every drive in this game. Stan Williams with an absolutely monster spin move there. He's going to get himself six yards. And at this point, eight first downs to Michigan State's two, but they have 14 points. And we have zero. Uh, it certainly feels like we'll have a chance to pick up the rushing yards required, but will we be able to get the passing yards? That's going to help 12 to Sean Mitchell. Again on the run from Maurice. And he has nearly 100 yards. Maybe a play action here. Blair out with a mild concussion for the rest of the game. That is terrible news to receive. But the offense is just going to have to pick it up. And there's Sean Mitchell again with another 12 yards. Offense starting to roll. Maurice Tate 10 of 13 through the air. We're going to hand it off, though. Try to keep this defense honest. And Durham Finch, maybe not the best spin move I could have done. But we got positive yards out of the play. See what we can do inside the red zone. I desperately think we need points. I'm scared to throw a pick. I don't necessarily want to throw to Wilson, but that's the guy I'm looking at right now. I'm throwing it. Hopefully it's not picked off. John Wilson catches it. It was close. DB almost able to make a jump, but another first down. And this time, first and goal. So from the seven, can we finally get into the end zone? I'm not taking a field goal here. Durham Finch. Absolutely broke the first tackle, destroyed that would-be tackler, but just got back to the line. And they're honestly doing a decent job of stopping the run up front. How about a counter to Durham Finch? Need to get into the end zone somehow. Pressure from the safety. Everybody's getting picked up on the blocks, and Durham cuts it up north into the end zone. Finally, we get onto the board midway through this second quarter. 
That is the momentum shift that we desperately needed. Now, it's just up to the defense. Now, as we kick this one away, I do want to mention that uh, I'm sure if a lot of you guys are familiar with Uncle Sam's Reject. Well, he was part of an online dynasty on Twitch, the G12 Network. Uh, but unfortunately, his internet isn't the greatest for streaming. So he had to retire from that online dynasty where he was playing as Texas, and I was invited to take his place. So if you're curious, we uh, are streaming those on Twitch once a week. Uh, we just had our first game, and it's my first user game pretty much ever. And I would say we fared all right. We took a 21-7 lead and ended up losing it uh, by 10 points. Just had a bad second half, but it was a lot of fun. And I hope that we can see some more of you guys stop and buy those games. As far as this one's concerned, though, third and two, a chance maybe to get off the field. Quarterback over the middle. I was trying to be aggressive with the zone, but the linebackers just didn't step up, and the slant was just too easy. Impressed with the uh, quarterback to sit in the pocket on that one. First down. This one's going to be a handoff. Nowhere to go as once again, it's Dallas Miller making the big hit. Safety seems to be all over the place at times, which you love to see. And these guys are going to be, well, they've been in the hurry up a lot this game, but I think we're going to see it a lot more with a lot more passing as this first quarter comes to a close. Bryant London, good deflection there. That could be good for some recruits. And on this third and nine, we're bringing the pressure. I don't want these guys to have much of a chance to get any sort of passes off. Could be the tight end on the out route. All the time, though, with quarterback thrown off the back foot. Dallas Miller got the pick, but he lands out of bounds. That would have been massive. It will still be the punt formation coming out for the Spartans, but we would have had much better field position and a little bit more time to work with. Although this is definitely returnable. It'll be uh, Ron Johnson, the third, fielding it. And, well, he might just get an eight. Oh, I'm an idiot. That was a touchdown. And I just ran straight into the defender. Serves me right for trying to showboat on that call a little bit too early. First and 10. Should have been across midfield, but it's not the case. And I'm going to roll out. Be as wide open if Maurice can get it there. John Wilson coming down with it. Mostly in stride and into the end zone. A one play touchdown drive. Hopefully we haven't given Michigan State too much to work with. But Maurice Tate is slinging right now. Somehow a beautifully accurate ball. Maybe not the most beautiful spiral. But hey, anything into the end zone is good in my book. Well, as it so often is in college football, all of a sudden things are completely flipped upside down. 14-point deficit erased for the Spartans, and they have bad field position after the special teams is getting involved on that one. But we are all tied up here, and on this first down, we'll see what we can do. Try to prevent anything. I'm expecting them to go for this, and that is Ron Johnson getting bird. Uh, I had him pressed up and just got beaten off the line. Not sure that we can afford to do that too much. Hopefully it doesn't hurt us again. They're trying the slip screen. Logan gets the corner. He's going to get stood up a little bit, but is able to get the stop on Bozeman. Stiff arm cheese. Thankfully was going sideways and not backwards on that one. On this second down, what can we do here again? Just expecting lots of passing. Left my man kind of open, but... It's all good. We only gave up a yard. The great news on a play like that is that we have these guys kind of reeling in a tough spot. Third and 10. He went out of bounds as well. Quarterback hit as he's throwing. So again, the clock will stop. They're going to be forced to punt it away. Well, what can we do to maybe have another good return? Ron Johnson had a touchdown on the last one, and I completely screwed him over. But maybe on this one, we can do better. Waiting for the blocks. Not much doing there. Missed uh, the block on 59, and you're not going to get much after that. Who knows? Maybe we can just sling up another touchdown. I got to be risky not to throw a pick with Maurice, but he seems to be pretty hot at the moment. Got to get outside the pocket. Feeling the pressure. Right bumper could have been wide open, and Y could have been wide open, but I just can't risk those throws right now. We got plenty of time to work with. We don't need the one play touchdown, so... Let's just make sure that we're holding on to the football. A minute and six left in the half. All of our timeouts. Maybe an interesting throw out to John Wilson. It's going to let the clock run. I'm going to send John deep again. We'll see. Jody Gentry, maybe an option. Jody Gentry over the middle. Nice catch. Nothing doing. Almost breaks the tackle. 
with nobody in front of him, but he still gets 28 yards. And will continue just to step back and throw from the ace, which is kind of surprising. Not really seeing anybody open, waiting for it. There's Jody Gentry again, catching it, taking a huge hit, crumpling down, but holding on to the football for a first and goal. Well, we've got all our timeouts. Man, are we going to score 21 points in like two minutes of game time? That is impressive. Durham Finch keeping it, trying to cut it back inside, and we'll take our first timeout with 23 on the clock. It was a nice gain of three. Got us halfway to the goal, and it's Courtney Smith time. The fullback dive. We'll see what it can do from a few yards out. Lower in the helmet into the end zone. 77 rushing yards for the offense as we have just absolutely blitzed out a lot of points against the Spartans. 21 to 14 now with 21 seconds left in the half. You know, we have two timeouts. As long as Michigan State doesn't come out, and just try to burn the clock and get into the locker rooms. This could be devastating. Oh my gosh. Special teams is on fire right now. So I'm curious to see. They're coming out looking like they want to burn the clock. We're going to get aggressive and bring that pressure. I don't want to let them run. And they're not going to take the timeout. So into the locker rooms, it seems like we're going to go. And that is the case. Clock winding down to zeros. Michigan State doesn't want to risk us continuing to build momentum because it is all in our side. The home team feeling good right now. Up two touchdowns. Michigan State kind of got lucky. We had a stupid, what was it? A stupid pick and a, a stupid turnover on downs coupled with two big plays for their offense that set them up for those touchdowns. Defense seems like they've kind of figured it out. The offense certainly is rolling. So things are feeling good. I mean, our key to the game, if Maurice kind of warming up, is absolutely working because he is on fire. Uh, I don't know what to say. I mean, other than the rough start in the first quarter, that second quarter, the end of the second quarter specifically, was absolutely phenomenal. And we'll just look to repeat that throughout the entire second half. While we're here at the half, I would like to ask you guys real quick to please scroll down and hit the like button if you're enjoying this one so far. It's a super easy way to support the channel, and I really appreciate it. All that being said, we can just go ahead and boot this one away and get this second half started and see if we continue to have some good special teams. The gunning has been phenomenal so far. Well, they ran the ball pretty well in that first half, and we'll kind of be expecting some more of that. Here's a good run. London slowing them down. And we're just not getting tackles on these Spartans running backs right now. Definitely a hard group to bring down. And on the option, we force the pitch out, but the blocking from the wide receivers is incredible as well. It might just be the hurry up, but these guys are doing some work as they're going to go with an option again. The pitch out again, the blocking from the wide receivers is good again. You know what's frustrating is uh, Michael Bozeman 10 carries, 120 yards as I don't know what we just witnessed. Was that, what the heck? Was that one of those center sneaks that sometimes the game glitches out and does? Yeah, he tried to take off. Sims got the tackle and the center got himself injured in doing that. So they've paid off the refs and they're now trying to break the rules and their starting center is out. For who knows how long after a play like that, toss out towards the edge. Whitaker slows him down enough for the rest of the Eagles to show up and get the tackle. And just like that, it's uh, a third and nine for this defense. Can we get the stop over the middle? They could have it thrown it deep. Potential double coverage, and it's Ron Johnson getting burned by Justin Smith. A 50-yard touchdown, and all three of Michigan State's touchdowns really have come from big plays. That is pretty brutal. So that didn't go uh, how we would have expected it. Third and a mile and we give up a 50-yard touchdown is never good. Jody Gentry is back to return. And, well, that was weird. Kind of glitching out. Had a couple of blocks, but couldn't quite make the most of them. And hopefully here we can try to build a little bit of that momentum back. We seem to have it for a little bit as Maurice Tate is going to lose a yard on the option keeper. And when the regular read option doesn't work, you bring out the triple option. Uh, update on that Michigan State Center out for a week. Little hit pointer. Triple option didn't work either. It's third and 12. 
Maybe we should be really, really glad, as I'm going for vert here, <laughs> that we picked up all those points at the end of the half. Y is wide open. Jeff Fontenot can't hold on through the contact. Oh, that's brutal. Well, there is no way that we can get away with not just punting this football. So that's what we're going to do. Didn't get full power. He should be able to feel this. Could be caught on the run. And he's going to be across midfield. Thought maybe we would get one of those ones where it bounces off of their noggin. But not the case in this instance. And this game has just been completely back and forth. And I'm terrified of the two-headed monster that is this uh, Michigan State run offense. Certainly the fact that they're in the hurry up doesn't help, but it has just been brutal. They're passing the ball well when they go to it, but just the runs have been stellar. Look at this, another broken tackle. We can't stop this guy. His yards after first contact are absolutely abysmal for us right now. They will step back to pass, and that's just a wide open receiver. On a little corner route, we can't do anything right. This hurry up has us fully bamboozled, which you never like to see, but man, is this brutal. Kind of expecting a run up the middle. We'll see. No, they will step back to throw. Going to dump it off. And thankfully, we get the tackle. Second and goal. That one pushed them back a couple of yards. So we've got that going for us. Maybe can expect something weird here as that's going to be an option. Waiting for the quarterback to pitch it. And he didn't. Keeps it and gets himself five yards. So third and goal, they'll step back to throw, trying to defend, and look at that, over the middle. It's one of the dang running backs. They are obliterating us. It's as simple as that Michigan State will retake the lead. This is truly one of the uh, craziest, most back and forth games I've seen in a long time. Ron Johnson the is gonna take this kick return and just get to the 25. And it is just really brutal that we've given up over 300 yards of offense to a team that really is not all that good. I'm throwing this one up. No, we're taking this sack. Couldn't step up and make the throw quick enough. It's a loss of eight. It was not going to be an easy one as now they have a running back with an ACL sprain out for the game. So this one, I don't know, maybe a rivalry game. Things are heating up. People are getting injured left and right. And we're going to hope for the best. Be kind of wide open. Let's throw the safe one, though. Give it to Jody Gentry little bit late throwing it but he holds on through the contact and there's our first down I think some of those deep balls Maurice can make in a year or two but he just doesn't have the accuracy or the arm power quite yet at this stage in his career that's a risky pitch Durham Finch breaks a tackle oh man that's scary but it worked this game is just all over the place it seems like first and ten we're going to step back to throw. Y could be open. No, it's an immediate sack. Nothing that we can do to avoid it. How brutal is that one? Tate getting thrown around in the pocket right now. And he doesn't have a chance to defend himself. Maybe that's just a cause of passing too much. As that one actually did take us above 250 passing yards on the game. Trying to wait. B could be open over the middle. Jody Gentry. It's too far out in front of him. I think I got to go for this. It would be a 61-yard field goal, which is nearly impossible, I would say. So instead, I don't know. We'll send somebody out. We'll see what we can do through the air, and we will hope for the best. Obviously not feeling too confident. B's wide open. Jody Gentry unguarded. Safety sagging back a little bit too much, and we convert. We really, really needed that one. 17 first downs now to just their eight. So very much uh, they're playing the, the big play kind of game, and we're just going slow and methodical. Unfortunately for us, it's working in their favor. Can we get one more playoff before this third quarter comes to a close? Stan Williams getting the carry, and he's just going to get stopped at the line of scrimmage. So similar to the first quarter, the third quarter was no good for us, and we're down a touchdown. Uh, six minutes to play. Not feeling too confident, but I guess we'll see. I certainly did not expect to be in this predicament in this point of the game. But this is where championship teams are made. Trying to scramble. Tate gets sacked. It's a loss of seven. Oh, he's just not quite quick enough. It's Ryan Kimbrough again. His second sack of the game. 
Well, we went for it fourth and seven further back. We're going for it fourth and 12 here. I don't feel confident at all, but this is just uh, the hand that we've been dealt. And you know what? Let's put uh, let's put Wilson on that little curl route. See if we can go to that one again. I'm throwing it. Wilson comes down with it. Oh, we're getting lucky there. Maurice Tate, just five incompletions on the day. He's certainly feeling it, although they're not saying he's feeling too good. And somehow Jeff Fontenot is cold. I don't really know why they would say that, but I don't, I don't know. Maybe we shouldn't be surprised. He did drop a, a wide open pass. Well, maybe it wasn't too wide open if it was through a little bit of contact, but it should have been nearly a touchdown. Sturm Finch on the counter gets us to a third and one at the six. And I'd like to come out and just run this down the middle. Give it to Stan Williams. He hasn't had the best day running the football, but that's enough for the first and goal. Well, I just, we're going to keep doing it. Stan Williams up the middle. Just keep running it at these guys. And eventually we'll get into the end zone. Tie ball game, 416 left. Defense needs to make a stop. Booting this one away. Uh, it should be a returnable ball. If we can get them in bad field position again, I'll feel somewhat confident. Although, I mean, the amount of big plays we've given up, I don't know if it matters what kind of field position they have. The good news for us is that one of the two ridiculous running backs is out, but the other one's still in. Kelly? Oh, we got lucky there. Gets tackled in the back for the loss of four, but I thought that could have been a face mask. I don't know. You tell me, guys. That, uh, that looks a lot like a face mask to me. If we can be certain about one thing, it's that these refs have not been good so far on the day. Quarterback is running around the pocket, and he's going to take a hit. Seemed like maybe a screen, but his first option wasn't there, and he tried to take off. And that just all of a sudden is going to make it third and a mile. Can we perhaps get the stop over the middle? Ron Johnson blanketing Vincent Everett there. He held on to the ball, but didn't get it the first down. So it's, again, the punt team forced out for Michigan State. And I want this to be the final drive. If the offense can be moving decently well, there's only three minutes left in this game. I'm going to try to force them to uh, get the stop and not allow their offense out onto the field. That's, they're just going to burn the clock themselves. This seems like a foolish mistake to me. But what do I know? Kind of crazy. All right, Ron with a chance to give us a chance really to win this game. Cutting it back in. Not the best cut I've ever seen, but I mean, we're awfully close to field goal range. So just uh, 2.38 now for the offense to work with. And again, we don't have to go all that far. However, certainly doesn't help when we are being backed up. I absolutely have to give Michigan State credit for their run defense because it has caused us problems time and time again in this game. That one's on the ground. Thankfully, Durham recovers it. I thought that was a clean pitch, but man, that was dangerous. So all of a sudden... Did the Michigan State gamble pay off a minute and 50? And it's third and a mile for us. And I'm not certain how we can do this. I got to get outside the pocket to extend this. However, it goes. Jeff Fonson, a wide open. He held on to this one. And he's still on his feet, staying in bounds. This is a Maurice Tate. I don't know if we've ever seen 25 of 20, over 300 yards passing. And somehow just one interception. I think that's the most impressive part of the stat line. There's Durham Finch over the middle. 14 more yards. Michigan State, they got to start taking those timeouts. And the reason I say that is because it's time to run the ball. We are not going to risk throwing an interception. Or too many opportunities for a fumble. That one makes it a second and seven. I'm burning the clock down here. And we're going to have to hope that we don't get ice too bad. Stan Williams kind of is in the middle of the play. And I'm going to let this clock burn down to three seconds. Hopefully this isn't the wrong decision. You certainly never want that, but I want the walk-off field goal. I don't want to risk trying to go for a touchdown. And worst case scenario, we go to overtime. So the field goal team's out. They're going to go ahead and ice the kicker, which is expected. Not too worried about it. Anti-free skill activated. And they're going to just continue to use those timeouts to try and ice us. Maybe we can break it multiple times. There's two. 
Uh, apparently it didn't work though. So here it is, three seconds on the clock. Field goal kick is up, dead straight down the middle. No win to push us left or right. And there it is, a walk off again for the kicker. I don't think that's our first this season. I think we've done a couple. 31 to 28, Michigan State two and seven, now two and eight. They brought the fight on this game. Unfortunately for them, just not quite enough. An ESPN classic. Oh man, first and third quarter we lose. Second and fourth we win, and that's what it comes down to. Durham Finch Jr. is our player of the game. But Maurice Tate, I think, maybe was the one that set him up for the ability to get that honor because Maurice was taking a lot of heat and setting things up really well today. The defense did okay, but too many big plays given up. Uh, that's something that certainly worries me. Man, truly the momentum on this one was insane. Look at the, the way the scoring goes. No points for two quarters for us, and they were able to spread it across three, but uh, just, I mean, they took a 14-0 lead. We brought it back 21-14. They took the lead 28-21, and then eventually we got on top, so it was just a game of runs all the way across the board. Little time of possession for them. They still did a decent job running the football against us, but 88 yards rushing for us. I thought we were over 100. I would have run more had I realized uh, that we were not at that 100-yard mark. But we did get the XP. Who knows? Maybe we'll get it for the recruits anyways. 320 yards passing for Maurice State. That's insane. Durham Finch Jr., 70 yards uh, rushing for a touchdown, a couple of receptions, and it's Dallas Miller with his two tackles for loss as the defensive player of the game. But like I said, I wasn't too impressed with many of the defensive players in general. Uh, just again, too many big plays for Michigan State. They're a good team, but they're two and seven now, two and eight for a reason. But it does put us to eight and three on the season. And hopefully we can just continue to advance. 10 recruits were at that game. So it would be incredibly important for those guys to be impressed with that win. Hopefully they don't see that uh, Michigan State only had two losses and hopefully we get a couple of commits and then also move up a few places in the rankings. Okay, well, good things are happening, I guess. A couple of guys ready to visit, which is good. Some decent visits. Uh, Jamal Neal commits. Uh, Mike Hurd commits. Darren Jones commits. Lots of big visits around the board. So I would say it was a successful week for us. One of those guys was a five-star. That's good. And we move up to number 13. So two more spots. Maryland is 2-8. The, the, the back of our schedule is so backloaded. We are even on overalls. We're expected to win. And things are looking really, really good for us, uh, I think, to go to the conference championship game. Or no, we needed Michigan to lose. And yeah, I think Michigan clinched their spot. So we won't be playing. Uh, they have two games they could still lose. But we likely won't be playing in the Big Ten Championship, but uh, we can still root for a good bowl game nonetheless. Anyways, though, that's going to do it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed it. And again, if you did, please like the video. It tremendously helps these videos get seen by more people. So again, it's an easy way to support the channel uh, if you're looking to do so. Otherwise, please consider subscribing if you haven't already. And then you can head down to the description where you'll find links to my Twitch at twitch.tv, where again, I'm doing an online dynasty with a bunch of other Twitch creators. And then there's also links to my Twitter, our community discord, and the college football revamp mod if you're trying to get it for yourself. All that being said, though, thank you guys so much for watching. My name is Goonmaster. You guys are the Grey Boys, and wherever you are, have a good night or have a good morning, and we'll see you later. Adios.